For thousands of years, explorers traveled the world in search of trade, knowledge, and power. And sometimes they came up with nothing. The story of human exploration is as old as the story of civilization, and many of the stories have become legends over the centuries. But what about the people before them, or people right now? These videos are going to show you treasures you didn't know existed in some very unexpected places, thanks to the hard work of good people like you. 15 Most Incredible Discoveries Found in the Middle of Nowhere Kaujiawen Station If you've emerged from this gleaming modern subway station, you'll found yourself in a vast wasteland. It's down to one of two scenarios, post-apocalyptic dystopia or you're at a mystery train station near the city of Chongqing in China. As populations in China swell, it's understandable that the government struggles to take care of the required infrastructure. But this is a little odd. It may look like it's been built on wasteland and may very well look abandoned, but it's actually a fully operational subway stop. But the Kaujiawen station doesn't hook up with any highways or different modes of public transportation. And because of that, anybody getting off at this stop must be shuttled to their vacation spot. But the authorities defended their choice to construct the subway to nowhere as an indication of its long-term planning. For now, it's sitting among undeveloped land, surrounded by overgrown grass and raw terrain. But once inside, once beyond the facade of the entrance, passengers are treated to a stunning new lobby. The station's three exits, only one of them is in use now, are all hidden among overgrown weeds on barren land. Fasten your seatbelts, because it's time for today's sweet topic. Ahoy matey! This life of a sailor or explorer back in the day was not like it is today. There was no GPS, no satellite mapping, and certainly no fuel or engine forcing the ship through the water. And occasionally, due to some unforeseen events, a ship might end up in this predicament. Maybe the ship ran aground, and due to some cataclysmic natural disaster, the entire vessel was lifted out of the ground. Nature took over and the boat is now as much of a part of that rock as grass and shrubs are of the island. Ships of medieval exploration had special challenges. It was not simply a cargo-carrying vessel, it had to journey extremely long distances with enough stores to sustain the lives of the crew. It had to be agile and an overcomer of perilous seas and storms. This ship did not make a return trip. It did, however, prove you can find the most incredible discoveries in the middle of nowhere. Don't you agree? Let your imagination flow in the comments below with the hashtag sweet topic. Giant Jesus Statue When you see this statue in western Poland, you know you've arrived. It's Jesus, and it's giant. Titled Christ the King, this statue of the Big JC was completed in 2010. It's 108 feet tall, the crown alone is 9.8 feet tall, and along with its mound it reaches 172 feet overall. It took five years in total to construct and cost around one and a half million dollars to build, which was collected from donations from over 20,000 residents. And it remains the tallest Jesus statue in the world, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. But controversy arose when locals noticed that antennas had been installed on top of Jesus' head, tucked inside his crown. Was the head of Christ the King being monetized in the pursuit of better Wi-Fi? Was it appropriate to place antennas on the head of such a significant monument? Opinions vary, but one thing's for certain. The towering statue is an ideal spot for an antenna array, providing an unobstructed view across the landscape and far-reaching internet coverage. The local bishop, when he learned about the antennas, ordered their removal because many faithful found them offensive. They were removed in 2018. Too bad. The world's tallest Jesus statue would have been the only Jesus statue with its own antenna and Wi-Fi connection. Fugitive Hideout A Wisconsin fugitive hid out for more than three years in this elaborate but entirely makeshift bunker before a hunter stumbled onto him recently, busted. The hunter found the hiding spot with a log door carved into an embankment on state land. He became curious and returned to the bunker to see what was inside. And this is what he found. A fugitive hideout powered by solar panels and a pedal generator. He even discovered the accused just weeks before the criminal was scheduled to stand trial. So the hunter called the police, guiding them to the bunker's door. 
A 20-minute standoff ensued before the fugitive surrendered, and rumor has it he seemed almost glad for human interaction. The accused told deputies that he had been building the bunker while his case was moving through court, stockpiling it with items he found in a local landfill. And he did a pretty good job. The fugitive set up solar panels on the bunker's roof to power LED lights, radios, cooling fans, and all manner of electronic equipment. He also had a pedal-powered generator for cloudy days, and the location was key too. The bunker was small enough that it stayed warm in winter and cool in summer. He was not only surviving, but thriving in this structure through all of the different supplies he was able to find. <laughs> Prada Marfa In 2005, there were no Prada stores in the entire state of Texas, not even in the big cities like Houston or Dallas. But now there is a Prada store in the middle of nowhere. Check it out. But it's not what you think. You can't actually buy a designer bag or a pair of leather loafers here. It's a giant plaster, glass, paint, and aluminum art installation that appeared along US Route 90, 26 miles outside the town of Marfa, Texas. It's called Prada Marfa, and it was meant to be a pop architectural land art project. However, the middle of the wild Texas desert isn't the usual place you'd expect to find art like this. Costing a sum total of $80,000, or in other words, about 40 Prada handbags, the site still gets thousands of visitors a year. Celebrities like Beyonce have even paid a visit to the lonely Prada store. Art duo Elm Green and Dragset were the creative forces behind the art installation. Their idea was stocked with authentic handbags and shoes from the Prada Wall Fenter 2005 collection. The designer of the luxury brand was even consulted on the project, handpicking the merchandise for the store's interior and allowing the artist to use the Prada logo. And if you know anything about designer fashion, a visible logo is just good branding. <laughs> Abandoned Japanese Theme Park Japan's Kujunama Leisure Land is an old amusement park built in 1979, and as you can see, it's not doing so well. Located in the pond of the Ghost Woman, that's the literal translation, the amusement park looks like it used to be pretty awesome. There are still a few attractions visible, a merry-go-round, cart racing, and some adventure land kind of attractions. It even had its own little golf course. The Ferris wheel stands out the most, old, rusty, but still proudly standing up there. But in its heyday, it attracted hundreds of thousands of visitors. An ancient myth is claimed could have been a factor in its untimely closure. The subject of the folklore is said to be a beautiful woman who supposedly lived near a pond in the area, well known for its abundance of snakes. One day, the woman gave birth to a baby in the form of a snake, which slithered away into the pond, where its cries could be heard every night. Driven mad by her serpent baby's incessant moans, the young mom went crazy, cursing the sight upon her death. The once bustling, family-friendly attraction closed its doors officially in 2000, but many folks believe it's still haunted by the ghost woman. Mountain Monastery According to historians, this monastery was founded by two priests from Athens before 395 AD. It was later restored in the 6th century at the request of the emperor, and it was in the 13th century that the monastery took its present-day form. Welcome to Sumela Monastery. It's a Greek Orthodox temple located on Black Mountain in Turkey. Nestled in a steep cliff at an altitude of about 3,900 feet facing the valley, it's a site of great historical and cultural significance as well as a major tourist attraction within Alton Deer National Park. The monastery is one of the most important historic and touristic attractions here. During the 18th century, the Sumela Monastery expanded and grew richer. Many parts were rebuilt and restored, with some wall surfaces being adorned with frescoes. However, it was during the 19th century that the monastery had its impressive golden years with the addition of large buildings and magnificent decorations. It was also during this time that many travelers started to come from all corners of the world to visit the majestic complex. Overlooking lush forests and water streams and blessed with a rich history and religious importance, it's no wonder that the monastery is a tourist attraction. <laughs> McDermott Castle If you love a lot of alone time, this is the place for you. There are few castles in Ireland as beautifully unique and isolated as the mighty McDermott's Castle. 
It's quite literally standing on a little green island smack dab in the middle of a lake. The McDermott clan owned the island up until the 17th century when it was given to the King of England. The King family kept the property with the purpose of hosting parties and events. The island has had a number of different structures built on it, dating back to the 12th century. The site has been occupied for over 800 years and is steeped in legend and folklore. Local legend tells the story of a girl living here, called Una, who fell in love with a boy from a lower class. But Una's father refused to let her leave the island in the hopes that this would deter the budding relationship. Unbeknownst to her father, Una's boyfriend began swimming to reach the castle. Then tragedy struck and the boy drowned. It's said that the poor girl died from grief and that both she and her partner have remained buried beneath two intertwined trees on the island ever since. But today, the island is overgrown and the castle has been damaged by ivy, which covers its walls. The present castle is now in a dangerous state of disrepair, but tourists can view the property during the summer. Desert Filing Cabinet Why does a filing cabinet rise from the earth as if it were a natural feature of an otherwise barren wilderness in southwest New Mexico? A Brooklyn-based art and culture magazine dreamed up the idea then gave it life by buying this small tract of land for $325. And in 2004, they drove from California to install the cabinet in a concrete embankment. Welcome to Cabinetlandia. Essentially, it's a file cabinet cemented into a concrete arch on a rectangular bit of land. It was meant to poke fun at those businesses and individuals who were at the time buying up acres of land on Mars for their own utopian desert plots. The idea was to make it look like the cabinet grew naturally out of the landscape, as if, in Cabletlandia, cabinets are naturally occurring elements of the ecosystem. The top drawer has a library card catalog, a guest book, a pillow to sit on while you read, and an umbrella to shade you. It still holds issues of the magazine from the collective that installed it, and the bottom drawer has at times contained warm beer, water, and occasionally boots for avoiding rattlesnakes, apparently. It's drawn more visitors than the folks at Cabinet initially expected. People have even added to the contents of the Cabinet located 10 miles east of the town of Deming in New Mexico. <laughs> Abandoned Disney Village Turkey's Burj Al Babas Resort is like a fairy tale village, and it promised high end European inspired accommodations and lavish amenities for buyers. Imagine living here. A rolling landscape of towering, pristine castles almost as far as your eyes can see. But these Disney-esque villas are completely abandoned. The French chateau-style castle exteriors are styled with ornate facades, Juliet balconies, and round turrets that adorn them. But inside are half-finished rooms. Some look as though workers dropped their tools mid-job and walked out. Fairy tale mansions sit empty in a sea of construction debris and what should have been a dream development turned into a nightmare. Developers meant for these uniform villas to be luxury vacation homes for wealthy tourists when they began construction in 2014. However, when the company went bankrupt four years later, investors pulled out of the deal, which put construction on hold. Instead of grandiose multi-million dollar retreats, Burj Al Babas has become something out of a dystopian novel. And now, located approximately halfway between Istanbul and Ankara, the empty town consists of hundreds of almost identical castles in various states of completion. <laughs> Washed up freighter In contrast to their saltwater relatives, lake freighters tend to rust slowly, take less abuse from Mother Nature, and tend to be around for an extended period of usefulness. The Benson Ford Ship House is one that's escaped the scrapyard and enjoys life reborn as one of the most popular attractions at Ohio's Putin Bay an island in Lake Erie. Well known for being the site of Oliver Hazard Perry's War of 1812 victory over British naval forces, it's also a popular vacation destination attracting hundreds of thousands of visitors annually, mainly because it's the final resting place for this forward deck house of the Great Lakes freighter. From the time it was built in 1924, the boat was also used to transport coal and iron ore across the American lakes. During its time in service, this cargo ship played host to illustrious guests such as Henry Ford and Thomas Edison. 
Following 60 years of faithful service, the ship was scrapped except for the forward deckhouse, which featured luxurious walnut-paneled staterooms, a dining room galley, and passenger lounge. After being decommissioned in 1981, the front part of the ship was removed and perched on top of this 18-foot cliff to serve as a holiday home. Green Crop Circles so you might wonder why crop circles are appearing in the desert here in Saudi Arabia. Furthermore, why are there even crops? This place is usually mostly all sand. The truth is that Saudi Arabia is one of the countries that uses a clever farming technique called center pivot irrigation. The green crop circles are the farm's agricultural fields. The circular crops that are visible from space are basically due to the center pivot irrigation being used here. In fact, you will find these circular crop fields on the map of those countries that utilize this form of irrigation. More than 80% of the water used here goes toward agriculture. As water supplies become increasingly limited, farmers want to know how to more efficiently use that water. And as data from satellites can help farmers better manage water for irrigation, a quickly diminishing resource in the desert environment. Rainfall amounts in the arid environment fall far short of the water needed to feed the systems, so farmers tap into deep aquifers and pump water from up to 3,300 feet below the surface. Each field is irrigated with a center pivot sprinkler system. During the year-round growing season, much-needed crops grown in the field include alfalfa, grass, barley, wheat, and corn. Caspian Sea Monster in 2020, after 14 hours at sea, a flotilla of three tugs and two escort vessels maneuvered slowly along the shores of the Caspian Sea to deliver this bulky special cargo to its destination, a stretch of coast near Russia's southernmost point. It's here, next to the ancient city of Durban in Russia's Republic of Dagestan, that this bizarre 380-ton Russian plane found its new and most likely definitive home and it's become famously known as the Caspian Sea Monster, and the colossal piece of machinery is over 300 feet with a wingspan of 123 feet and weighs over a million pounds. Ground effect vehicles, as they're known, are a sort of hybrid between airplanes and ships. They move over water without actually touching it. They're officially classified as ships, but in fact, they derive their unique high-speed capabilities from the fact that they skim the surface of the water at a height of between 3 to 16 feet. The plane was abandoned after the 1990s collapse of the Soviet Union, condemned to rust away at a naval base 62 miles up the coast. And now, the Caspian Sea Monster is set to become the star attraction and a new tourist site, with a military museum and theme park displaying an array of military machinery and equipment. Volcano Pizza Guatemala's Pacaya Volcano is erupting right now spewing rivers of lava and ash clouds, keeping local communities and authorities on high alert. But for this mid-30s accountant, the lava oozing down the mountainside has become an opportunity, a delicious one. He serves up pacaya pizza, and these slices are actually cooked on the smoldering volcanic rock to awe tourists and locals. Rising 2,800 feet above sea level, the pacaya volcano overlooks nearby villages. And since 1965, when it became active once again, the pacaya has become a magnet for tourists. Pizza Pacaya's founder became fascinated with the volcano. But instead of running away, he decided to stick around. He saw tour guides inviting tourists to roast marshmallows over the hardened but still hot lava. That's how the idea was born. And in 2019, the pacaya became the first pizza place in the country and one of the first on earth to use lava caves as ovens. The owner regularly hikes to the volcano's top carrying over 50 pounds of ingredients and equipment on his back. Various toppings including salami, pepperoni, chorizo, prosciutto, vegetables, onions, olives, peppers, and of course, cheese. When he cooks on top of the lava, the process takes only minutes as the magma can reach up to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. Desert Hand this large-scale sculpture of a hand is located in the Atacama Desert in Chile, on the Pan American Highway, in one of the driest and most deserted places in the world. And it's known as the Mano del Desierto, aka Desert Hand. It's a massive and majestic statue that dominates the entire valley. The idea behind the huge hand reaching out to the sky was the artist, to express human frailty, 
pain and loneliness, an homage to the vulnerabilities and weaknesses of the humans in the face of injustices and suffering around the world. Plus, it looks awesome. The Atacama Desert is the driest desert in the world outside of the polar regions. The vast plains stretch is estimated to be measured at over 40,000 square miles. Due to its dry conditions, there is no human presence in the Atacama Desert, so the desert hand really stands out. Created in 1992, this work is acclaimed all over the world thanks to its originality and the emotion the hand expresses. It's surprisingly popular and it attracts thousands of tourists every year. Although it was built 30 years ago and looks just as if it was made of sand, the sculpture is very resistant. It's 36 feet tall and located 3,600 feet above sea level. Chicken Church Known as Gereha Ayam, this infamous chicken church is perched on a hill in a forest on the Indonesian island of Java. The church's awesome avian design has inspired many debates and fan theories over the years, each one attempting to solve the mystery of why someone would spend money to build a hollow chicken in the middle of the jungle. It was left behind by the colonists, one person commented. No, someone replied, it's haunted. The truth is that it's neither of those things. In fact, it was meant to be a dove but ended up looking more like a chicken. An Indonesian man had a vision in 1988. He imagined a building shaped like a giant dove residing on a hilltop. It would be a place of worship for all faiths. He was just the man to build it, and this is what he ended up with. But for a long time, it wasn't fully furnished because the builder ran out of money. These days, the chicken church is no longer abandoned. The renovations made recently include jeweled tiles, paneled windows, a small paved access road, and work on the underground prayer rooms. Displays in the main hall, the body of the chicken, document the project's growth from a divine dream to a full-fledged poultry temple. And now the chicken church attracts many curious travelers and photographers every year. Sometimes in the middle of nowhere, you find the most amazing things. These videos are the proof, but make sure you know before you go. Be prepared and enjoy the journey. You don't want to miss out on these incredible discoveries.